you've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Imaging Services, Cairo Thin, Universal Tractioning Systems, Zingit Solutions, Dr. Peter Goldman's Zone School of Healing, Everest Coaching Systems, True Cairo, The Social Health Expert Summit, Chiropractic Jobs Online, Rhino Coaching, Cairo Matchmakers, and Cairo Moguls. Let's hustle. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it is uh, 12, 18 p.m. out here in Grand Junction, Colorado. I have Dr. Pete Goldman on with me today, Zone School of Healing. I'm going to flash a link up above uh, our names below our, our screens here, and it shows where you guys can click on to and get into the Zone School of Healing. So I'm going to fast forward the close of people. And I know one of the things we're going to talk about here is sales business. Well, if you guys get into the Zone School of Healing, you will be able to build more certainty. One of the things we're going to talk about is discipline. So we're going to go down some really cool paths with you today. But before we get going, uh, Dr. Pete Goldman is coming in from San Francisco, Colorado. I am coming in from Grand Junction, which is in the Grand Valley in the Western Slope on the other side of Colorado, nowhere lives. And I moved here to hear the birds chirp. Anyways, let's dive deep into Zone School of Healing. Um, one of the things I wanted to discuss with you today, does adjusting make the practitioner weak? Actually, it's interesting. Um, over the years, I've heard, I've heard people say things like, you know, I, I adjust a lot of people per day and I've been doing this a long time. My shoulders hurt, my low back hurts, whatever. Um, I actually, when I was when I was just starting out, I, I asked one of my mentors. This guy, this guy's name was Dr. Victor Lufro, and um, twenty plus years ago, I spent, you know, probably a hundred hours with this guy one on one over a period of time. When he was in his eighties, by the way, Dr. Lufro, um, again, he was like eighty something years old, twenty plus years ago. He's not alive anymore, but this guy actually was a direct student, like studied with B.J. Palmer. Clarence Gonstead and Dr. Thurman Fleet. So three of the, you know, three giants in the chiropractic profession, he studied directly with it. And he was one of my main mentors. And I said, Dr. Lufbro, man, you're like 85 years old. You're adjusting like a ton of people a day. You're strong as an ox. What's the story? He said, Pete, if you have the image that adjusting will hurt you, it will hurt you. But if you have the image that every person who's laying down on your table, you are picturing perfect health for them through your adjustment, you're identifying with perfect health all day. You should adjust 50 people and feel better at the end of the 50 people. Now, I myself have been adjusting for a long time. I feel amazing head to toe. And I've told this story before. Um, I don't think with you, Jim, but I, I've told it in various places that I've talked. And I, I want to I mention it now. Um, you know, there's, a, there's an idea. I don't know if it's a true idea or not, but there's an idea. We've all heard it that jogging can hurt your knees. Again, I'm not saying it's true. I'm, I'm not saying it's true, but there are people who believe that. And in the United States, you show up in a doctor's office and say, hey, you know, I've jogged for many years and I just think I messed my knees up, all the pounding on my knees and my knees are messed up now. And the doctor will say, yeah, you did or whatever. That's a, it's a common idea. And a lot of people in this country jog and hurt their knees over time. So back in 1993, when I was a pretty good, you know, uh, stand I was a good stand up fighter and I um, was fighting at a high level. I went to Thailand in January of 93. I went to Thailand and I went to some Thai boxing gyms and I wanted to spar with, you know, some of the really good Lumpini Stadium champs and the, the high level Muay Thai guys. Anyway, so I went there and I trained with them for a while. And I noticed that every morning at, I think it was 6 a.m., I think it was uh, six days a week, so maybe six days a week, they woke up, all the Thai boxers in the Thai boxing camp who lived there, and they jogged for 10 miles. They took a 10-mile run every morning. Now, and then they, they would come back and train all day, train six hours a day, hardcore training. And at the time, I was in pretty good shape, and I was a fighter myself, and I... I asked one of the Thai trainers, I said, oh, are you jogging 10 miles a day to build your stamina and your endurance? Because that's why I, I used to jog for that, was to build my stamina and endurance. He goes, no, 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 we don't. We, 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 we train all day. We, we have stamina and endurance from training. We jog 10 miles a day to make our knees stronger. All that pounding on the knees makes the knees really strong. And if you know Muay Thai, there's a lot of clinching, a knee, you can catch an elbow, whatever you want. Your knees to be super tough. So in Thailand, 
they believed that the jogging made their knees strong, and it did. And in the U.S., many people believe that jogging makes their knees weak, and it does often. So I started thinking, is it the physical activities we do, or is it the ideas we have attached to our physical activities that end up manifesting in the body? So anyway, I'll tell you right now, if you go into your office saying, man, all this adjusting, this pressing down, it's making, my, it's making my triceps strong, my forearm strong, my wrist strong, my fingers strong, my back strong, my core strong. That's what it'll do. So it's strictly the idea you have attached to adjusting that will determine what happens in your body from adjusting. Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of have a disconnect with that. And I think that it's been kind of uh, passed down as an old wives tale, if you will, about adjusting will make your body break down. And honestly, I've talked to people and they're like, oh man, I'm wrecked. I've been practicing for 25 years and you know, I've injured this, this has gone out, this has happened. And I think it's kind of like a, a known almost inside of our circle that if you adjust, eventually you start hurting and you get achies and Look pains. At this, Jim. Jim, I, I happen to be in a Muay Thai gym right now. Look at this. Look at this. You see, if I believe that punching this is going to mess up my wrist, it will mess up my wrist. But if I believe that punching this is making my wrist strong, it'll make my wrist strong. Now, listen, there's a limit to this. You can't tell someone to go to the top of a 10-story building and jump off. Say, yeah, you jump off the building. It's going to make you strong. No, they'll be dead. But <laughs> within the limits of reason... The ideas you have attached to activities determine how those activities manifest in your body. And I know we're going to jump in to the next topic, but the after topic is discipline. So we can talk a little bit about discipline because I know that that's a reason why you practice the way you do and why the zone technique is something that all people should start to pay attention to because they get to have more discipline with certainty. And it is chiropractic is an art. And it is a healing art, not a martial art, but it is something that you deliver as the adjuster and you help people. And there is a code and we'll get into that in a minute. But let's talk a little bit about this uh, idea is business sales. That was one of my posts today. And it's an engagement thing. And I think that it has to be paid attention to. Um, so I know your background's in economics. So let's tackle this conversation. OK, sure. And I just want to say one thing you mentioned before I get into, you know, the business part, you mentioned about the zone school. People should pay attention. Here's the deal. You know, quite frankly, if you're really happy with the way your practice is, I don't join the zone school, you know, like. But I can't imagine too many people are because you can go to D.E. or wherever you go and get all rah rah. But the rah rah only lasts for three weeks and the vibration fades and you're down again for the most part, I'm sure there's exceptions and good for you. But um, when I hear chiropractors say things like, you know, I'm a nervous system doctor and above down inside out. And no, I like that. But don't you know, when you walk in your office and almost everyone on their entrance form, the reason they're there to see you is for neck and back pain. What happened? I thought you're a nervous system doctor. Yeah. You tell them the chiropractic story, you get them into wellness, but wouldn't it be kind of cool to have a practice where 80% of your patients on the entrance form, on the entrance form, like why they came to you on the entrance form is for their digestion, their liver, their pancreas, their thyroid, their immune system, their gallbladder, their reproductive organs, their freaking pituitary, whatever. Isn't that the kind of practice you want? Because that's what Dee Palmer, who's the founder of Chiropractic, talked about. Um, so that's, I mean, that's my thing for the zone school. I mean, if you're freaking thrilled with what you're doing, good for you, but I don't think you really are because you can talk subluxation and all that stuff as much as you want, but just walk in your waiting room and see who's there. So no, I understand, you know, some people, they, you know, they like, I expect miracles and I, you know, you practice long enough, you're going to get miracles here and there. But if you join the zone school, you get so-called miracles every day. Now on to the business thing, like Jim said, um, I actually was a, before I, became a chiropractor. I was an economics major at a very tough economics program. And I come from a family of very successful business people. Um, and everyone has their own way of doing business. But there's just some things, you know, if you're not struggling, but there's some basics people forget. You know, I was showing the punch on the thing before. You know, the reason that uh, Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao is a great boxer is not because he does anything fancy. He has a very good fundamentals. He has a very good straight 
punch. He has a very good uppercut. He has a very good hook. It's not too fancy. He's just really good at the basics. So there's some foundations in economics, like you're trying to make more money. Well, guess what? Revenue equals price, which is what you're charging for your adjustments, times quantity, how many people are coming in. And profit equals revenue minus costs. So you, you want to you wanna get wealthy, you got to understand some just basic equations. And there's also something called price elasticity. And price elasticity means if you're charging a dollar for your adjustments, well, you'll probably have a line out the door, but you won't make too much money because every adjustment costs a dollar. If you charge 100000 for your adjustments, you probably won't have anyone get adjusted by you. But there's a, there's a price where you can be at the highest end where you'll still maximize your revenue. You might have a couple of people who don't come because of the price, but you'll still maximize your revenue. And that's price elasticity. You got to think about it. Now, I know some people are like, yeah, I don't want to turn anyone away. Good. Good for you. Don't turn anyone away. You set your price. If someone's like, hey, you know, I'm homeless, but I really want to get adjusted. Okay, adjust them for free. Good for you. I, you know, that's between you and them or yourself. But in general, if you're if you want to be wealthy, uh, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't want to be wealthy. I'm I'm just answering Jim's question. But if you want to be wealthy, there, there's just some basic formulas that you have to be aware of. Yeah, you know, I kind of wanted to answer that myself. And I wanted to uh, pose that for a conversation between the two of us, because I think that those are the most fun for our audience to get is your side of this thing and my side of this thing. And I think that honestly, that selling is business. And the quicker that somebody can get the person to take interest and to go through the business transaction with honesty and with conviction and with the transference of uh, equal exchange, whatever you make your business to be, whether it's I'm going to do an adjustment, I'm going to do a screening event, I'm going to do an interview, I'm going to take a sponsorship, I'm going to go do a speaking engagement, whatever that exchange is, you have to know that that business is what is either serving you or taking from you. And I really do think that anybody that wants to be the adjuster and wants to be the chiropractor, they have to figure out a good business strategy to make sales. Otherwise, they don't have a business. They have a give love service. And if they don't have a business, then they have a give love service, then they are going to go broke. And that's the sad truth in the business world that I've come to realize in chiropractic, that if you don't have a business, then you have a give love service. And I do appreciate the idea that a chiropractor will say, yeah, let's get that guy adjusted. Beautiful. I love it too, uh, Pete. But I do think that if we don't teach people the transactional relevance of I'm going to draw my line in the sand, these are my fees, and this is my discipline. And I know that's our next part of the, the conversation is discipline. So let's dive into discipline or rehash some of the thoughts that I just opened up for you from this last topic. Okay, I want to say about um, building a practice. Listen, the Zone School of Healing is not a business building or practice building school, but I got some thoughts on that. <laughs> the Zone School of Healing is a school that teaches you how to get better results than you can get anywhere else. And I stand by that a thousand percent. And I welcome anyone to come visit my office and see what's up. Um, if you get good results, good. But... If you get great results, good. If you get miracles here and there, good. But the Zone School of Healing will teach you to get better results than you've ever got before. That I can guarantee you. And guess what? I do guarantee it. Why, is, why do I say I guarantee it? Because my school is guaranteed. If you, pay, if you join the school and don't like it, you get a full refund. Um, with that said, as far as the business aspect goes, first of all, I've always, been, I've always been all cash. I've never taken health insurance ever. You know, when I say all cash, of course, I take credit card, whatever, but... I've never taken health insurance. Um, I don't believe in taking health insurance for myself. I'm not telling anyone else what to do. It's not part of the zone school. It's not part of anything. I'm just, since you're asking me the question about business, I don't take any health insurance. When someone gets adjusted by me, I need them to pay me. I never want to think like, I'm going to call an insurance company and say, oh, I adjusted them 10 times and this is my fee. And they go, well, we're going to pay you for seven and we're going to give you this. No, I'm adjusting someone. I need a thousand, I need, I need a hundred percent payment at the time of the visit. So every person comes in, they pay me 100% at the time of the visit. It's $95 each. My session may be three minutes. So they're giving me $95 for three minutes. 
and you know do the math you have a full waiting room that's over a thousand an hour um and um for me building a practice is all about results because i was talking to jim before we uh before we went on i said look jim i said if someone comes to me and they say something like hey dr pete you know i don't know what's up with my digestion but i i have bloating like every time i have breakfast i have lunch i have dinner i'm just feeling bloated all i feel i feel horrible all day and i'm like okay well that's easy. We'll balance your body and, you know, you'll eat three meals a day and feel amazing. And, you know, they come, I balance their body and I'm sitting there with them a month later. Hey, Dr. Pete, it's like my digestion is literally perfect. I don't even know what bloating means anymore. You can bet they're going to tell their mother, their father, their sister, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their whoever, their husband, their wife, three of their friends. And you're going to have 10 referrals from that patient. So um, I personally have never advertised ever never done any marketing. I'm not saying no one should. I'm saying myself, I'm just based on results and the results spread the word and the practice gets huge because of results. With that said, like, like I was talking to Jim before, Hey, I'm down with whatever works. If someone does spinal screenings or they pay Jim for his services, which are awesome by the way, or they do marketing or social media. Hey, listen, whatever is bringing people in the door so you can help them. I'm all for it just answering the question specifically, I just do it on results. You've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Imaging Services, Cairo Thin, Universal Tractioning Systems, Zingit Solutions, Dr. Peter Goldman's Zone School of Healing, Everest Coaching Systems, True Cairo, The Social Health Expert Summit, Chiropractic Jobs Online, Rhino Coaching, Cairo Matchmakers, and Cairo Moguls. Let's hustle. What you're saying is now the conversation of discipline. And the person that trains themselves properly and gets results because of their certainty, now they don't have to do the things like trust a guru to go out there and do the new patient harvesting for them. Now they don't have to trust advertising to get them the people to come to them. I mean, all these things are working. They're like seven streams of income. Like you should have your certainty. You should have your price points. You should have your marketing and different aspects wherever you think you need it. But if you're good enough and you do get the results, you don't have to advertise. And that's the, the, the difference with certainty and discipline and knowing what you will take and what you won't take. And then you can build upon success going forward. But I do think that you said, hey, you know what? I'm this game in town and I'm not that game in town. And I do this. I check you. I adjust you. And then I collect. I check you. I adjust you. I collect. And the quicker that you can speed up the process for a chiropractor to actually practice chiropractic is the best thing a chiropractor will ever do. And I want to just add to that when you talked about, you know, I check you, I adjust you, I collect. I would just add to that. I fix the problem because, you know, if someone's like, hey, I have headaches all the time. I'm suffering. My head hurts all the time. I, I, tried, I tried other chiropractors. I tried acupuncturists. I tried medical doctors. I tried naturopaths. I tried homeopaths. My head hurts all the time. You know, it's hard to function in life because I have splitting headaches all the time. Well, well you know what? they come to me and a month later, their head feels perfect. 24, seven, 365. They'll pay for that. And they'll tell a lot of people. So, um, even beyond the check and adjust, it's more like fix. Now, a lot of chiropractors are like, Whoa, wait a second. Like we don't treat symptoms. We don't, yeah, you know what? I'm a chiropractor. I don't treat disease. I don't diagnose disease. I don't treat symptoms. Of course I adjust the cause, but to discuss it, damn right. I will. And GD Palmer, the founder of chiropractic, the only person who has the right to define chiropractic, say what it is, whatever. Didi Palmer has a book. It's called The Chiropractor's Adjuster. He wrote it in 1910. And what he said, he said, the reason I'm calling it The Chiropractor's Adjuster, he said, look, I made this in 1895. In the last 15 years, chiropractic in 15 years has gotten so off the mark. I'm here to adjust you. I'm here to adjust your idea of what chiropractic really is. That's why it's called The Chiropractor's Adjuster. You can check it out. So in the book, among other things, he has like a glossary. It's like with like 120 diseases. And he says, for this condition, he lists the disease, adjust this bone this way. So the notion that we can't discuss symptoms or conditions is, I don't, 
that came along the way in chiropractic. I don't know who said it. Modern day dogma. I don't know what that is, but it ain't it ain't chiropractic. It's D.D. Palmer. And by the way, you know, I know some chiropractors don't even like to use the word doctor and patient, which is cool. But I don't care. You want to have a practice where you say this is a practice member and we're a team and oh, oh, whatever. You get great results. I tip my hat to you. However, that's not chiropractic either, because what they say. Well, I shouldn't say that. Let me rephrase that. It is chiropractic. But a lot of them say we want to get we want to get away from the allopathic model of like doctor patient. No, that's. D.D. Palmer, B.J. Palmer, Fred Barge, all these great chiropractors, they call it doctor patient. So you're getting away from the chiropractic model, which is fine. If you want to get away from the chiropractic model, that's cool. But you're not getting away from the allopathic model. You're getting away from the chiropractic model because chiropractors for over 100 years have been saying doctor and patient. Anyway. Yeah, and I get that too. And I think that a lot of the things in the profession are semantics. And the problem that I find is most people is they go into a system where they fail and they get on the slippery slope of dis- disbelief being an educated doctor. And they get on a slippery slope of not knowing what to do or, or who to trust. And we are all, all being, you know, shined different objects as what we should pay attention to. But I do think that all chiropractors and the the skill sets that they you know administer as they become professionals, they're they feel really good when they're in service. And you know what? That, sorry. No, yeah. go ahead. I just wanted to say, like, if I could give any advice to any chiropractors, don't hide behind your philosophy. Like, help people because the person who comes in with headaches that I that I mentioned before who's suffering, they need you to. They don't want to have headaches anymore, so. If you're like, well, I'm doing this technique, and according to you know, I relieve your subluxations, and you still have headaches. I guess you're supposed. I guess you're still supposed to have headaches because I've been relieving your subluxations for six months. You still have headaches. I guess you're supposed to. You don't know what you're doing. I'll help. I'll help you know what you're doing. You gotta. The person's coming in not to get your freaking subluxation philosophy. They're coming so you can make their head feel good, and. Uh, D.D. Palmer would not have hid behind his philosophy. He put that to bed, which I do and my students do. Well, the thing I look at, Pete, is it's like, what's that little uh, silver thing that is on the outside of a wheel? Do you know what it is? Okay. Like on a car, like, no, on a, a car, like balances it, like that little weight there. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I, I don't, I know what you're talking about. I'm not sure what the name is. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you don't, you don't know either. I don't know either. But we know that we need it on there because the guy that fixes our tire puts it on there. And we don't need to know what lug nut pattern that we tighten down lug nuts at what PSI. We don't have to have that conversation with the guy that does our tires to know what that one thing is, right? But what we do get is a car that has an equal alignment with new tires and they're all spun and rotated and balanced. And we know that they're good to go because that guy's a professional. But the outcome is you just want your car to work the way it's supposed to. If you if you turn a light switch on, if you turn a light switch on, the light goes on. You may not be an electrician, you may not understand how it works, but you know when you put that switch on, the light goes on. That's good enough for you. Yes, 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 yes. Amen, man. That's just it. Is you you have to follow the level of certainty that you have possess in you that the end user needs. We have to clean up the procession of uh, the message to where we can talk with more certainty about what you do and what you don't do, and not confuse people. I think the hardest person to ever sell anything to is the confused buyer. I think also the part of the uh, is is the, cu- the 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 confused seller. I think a lot of chiropractors are confused about what they're capable of, what they really do. You know, they they go to school for whatever reason they go to, and they latch onto a certain philosophy or technique, but. You know, the patient walks in your office. They don't care what your GPA was in school. They don't care what technique you do. They don't care about your subluxation philosophy. They want to not suffer. And if someone, we mentioned the headache thing. We mentioned the bloating thing. Um, Like I had a woman come in. She came in. Her chief complaint, because it's the kind of chief complaints I get, was that she was pregnant three times. She had three miscarriages. That's her chief complaint. She's like, obviously, my reproductive organs don't work right, she's telling me. Because she had three miscarriages. Something's not working. I said, okay, let's balance you out. And then I expect you to get pregnant and it'd be fine. And it, that's what happened. I balanced her out. Two, three months. She got pregnant. She already has a kid. Her kid's probably one years old now. Everything's great. So that is what it's all about. I'm not going to sit there 
and, you know, give her a 20 minute subluxation talk and not actually do what I had to do. Well, here's the best part of our whole conversation, because I know we're coming up on the end of it. And what I will tell everybody out there is um, going to a chiropractic college costs you a lot of money. Obviously, they care about you while you're walking in those four walls. But after you jump out of that school there, they they are on to the next one, next man up. And I do know that that's been something of a concern for the chiropractic schools or why aren't my alumni tithing back? Why aren't the alumni uh, giving back? Well, keep a better connection with the person once they finish your program and you'll have that. And I think that that's something beautiful about what you do with the Zone School of Healing is you give people uh, the guidance and the direction. And hey, if you didn't get what you wanted out of it, we'll refund your money. And hey, do you find a chiropractic college going to offer you that opportunity? Hell no. So if you guys want the real deal, the link's in the message above. Click on that link. Go over to the Zone School of Healing and get your money back guarantee. Give it a shot. You have nothing to lose but your pain. <laughs> I love that. And by the way, I would just add to that. If you know anyone in my school, talk to them. Be like, hey, you know, I, I kind of heard about Dr. Pete's Zone School of Healing and the Zone Technique. If you're in it. What's up? 95% of my students are blown away, blown away. And they'll, they're like walking advertisements for the school. So chat with them. Exactly. You can, you can sign up with the, you can sign up to join the school with the link that Jim just provided. And when you, when you join the school, you join the school, you get immediate access to a membership site on the membership site is a bunch of videos that you have lifetime access to that I explain how to do what I do. And then you have eight weeks access to live trainings with me every Sunday at 1.30 California time, eight weeks in a row, live trainings with me. And, you know, after that, there's all kinds of other stuff. But at the end of the day, the results speak for themselves. Exactly. And if you guys find value in what Dr. Pete says, uh, give it a shot. If you want to have more certainty in your practice, become a business rather than a give love service, then you're going to be able to step across and know that you have a a legion of people out there that are doing zone healing and taking care of their communities and building certainty in their processes, but also healing people that have legitimate needs for your services. So right. the services is also a part of the give love service, but it's also the services you provide that you have discipline in, that you have clarity in, and you're going to let them live the big idea with you as BJ Palmer put out there. And I would actually add to that, that and I'm sure you'd agree, Jim, you know, a student in my school can implement everything I'm saying and be full fledged with a give, love and serve. You can give love and serve oh. a thousand percent within the context of the school. I'm not telling anybody not to do that and to, to, and to cast that off. I'm just saying that if you don't run a sales driven business, then you don't have a business. You have a failure. I'm with you. <laughs> hey, Jim, Jim well, I can't see your whole shirt. What do you got there? Is that Oh, these are the the chiropractic legends. All right. All right. We have uh, over here, let's see, uh, Reggie Gold, Jim Sigafus, uh, D.D. Palmer, Fred Barge, and B.J. Palmer. Okay. I have my two and, favorite on there. My two favorite on there is D.D. Palmer and uh, Fred Barge. And here's there's D.D. and there's Fred. And here's mine for the day. <laughs> Hello, Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> Representing, brother. I love it. <laughs> born, and, born and raised. Okay. Thank you, Jim, as usual. Yeah, man, I appreciate you making some time for me today and sharing uh, the the Facebook Live with me and sponsoring Cairo Hustle Podcast. Um, is there anything we didn't touch on that you want to talk about? I just want to say, um, I just want to say, if you join the Zone School, only one of two things will happen: you either be utterly thrilled and it'll be the best decision you ever made in your healing career, or you won't like it and it's free. And the kind of people <laughs> I have are the kind of people who are like, Dr. Pete, I've been, I've been practicing for 25 years. I was ready to hang it up. I was so frustrated. Now I'm in the zone school. I can't wait to go to work every day. Or Dr. Pete, I was a high-level AK guy or girl, high-level chiropractic neurologist, high-level functional medicine person. Now I'm in your school. I spend one-tenth of the time with a patient and get 50 times better results. Or people who are like, you know, I always went to DE. I love subluxation. I kind of wanted to have a practice that was, you know, nervous system stuff and more than neck and back. And now, now, now that I'm in the zone school, I'm able to help people with all kinds of stuff. And I attract situations like that in my office. So my students are thrilled. It speaks for itself. Talk to any of them. And um, 
that's it. Click the link, join the school, and I'll see you Sunday. I'll be teaching you one on one on not one on one, but I'll be teaching you face to face on Sunday in the uh, Sunday's weekly live training webinar. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you once again, and uh, thank you everybody that watched us over this uh, Cairo Hustle sponsorship edition Zone School of Healing. Click the link above. Um, you guys are just one story away. Keep hustling, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you so much, Doctor Pete. Thanks, Jim. See you soon. All right. Thank you for listening to Cairo Hustle Live. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.